uh, David Dostad. I'm a child psychiatrist with special interest in intellectual disability and autism, and I work at the Children's Hospital in Sydney. It, it's uh, it's more a, a, a clinical cohort, is a, a, a audit of 150 cases, and and. Uh, it, it comes off the back of the book we've written uh, on mental health for children and adolescents with intellectual and developmental disabilities, which is an interdisciplinary uh, basic education on practical interventions, uh, and uh, really the first of its kind. But having done this uh, multidisciplinary uh, volume, I had to rediscover my medical contribution, and so I went back to look at uh, both diagnostic and prescribing practices. Very much believer of a developmental framework for as a context to understand behaviour uh, and abnormalities of behaviour. Um, and I think the first thing to notice is that it's the level of, it, of additional impairment from the emotional behaviour disturbance is actually greater than that from the intellectual disability. When you look at the labels that I find useful, they have a lot in common with the dimensions of disturbance in, uh, for example, the developmental behaviour checklist and the aberrant behaviour checklist. Um, so it, it provides some evidence for looking at these disorders in developmental terms. Uh, the important thing is the the emotional behavioural disturbance is the reversible part of that impairment and that's where energy and resource should be focused. It is complex because in our area of work you have to think about uh, uh, the medical problems, the behavioural phenotypes, the, the, the depression anxiety in the parents which is so prevalent, the needs active treatment, uh, as well as looking at the developmental disorders and I think it's the thing that's special about this area is identifying the range of developmental disorders which uh, regrettably most psychiatric services don't consider their business and so I, I find I work more closely with paediatricians than with psychiatrists in fact. It's more the comprehensiveness of it. I'm a big believer in it. it's uh, a clinician-led uh, semi-structured interviewing rather than relying in fact on questionnaires uh, and uh, uh, and listening to the parents very attentively and uh, and uh, weighing up what they see against what you see in the child and what the child can describe to you so it's weighing up all sources of information and then you have to look at well how do we understand this disturbance and that's where you find that well most of them have got oppositional behaviors most of them have got ASD, uh, most of them have got ADHD, but then a lot of them also have anxiety and mood problems and self-injurious behaviour, and they can't tell you about it. You have to pick that up from observation. Anxiety is an important feature to pick up, and uh, SSRIs aren't the only medications that are useful for anxiety, uh, so that things like clonidine, and mood stabilizers or propranolol can be really valuable medications that uh, most more general clinicians don't think about and uh, can really make a key difference in this population. Where you're dealing with the most disturbed uh, individuals, medications are a really important part of a multidisciplinary effort and uh, I certainly find it very gratifying that my colleagues from Allied Health come and say there's nothing that we know that will help. Have you got a medication that will help? It's very much part of the team approach. And I think it's important to go on the public record that you can't manage on just one medication with all these cases. They're complex cases. And uh, uh, it has to be methodical in terms of trying one at a time, one change at a time. So it's a slow process working out what's the best effect. Um, but. Uh, uh, my mentor used to say, any doctor worth his salt will be prepared to prescribe.